Hi, I'm professional wildlife photographer Paul McGill and in this video I'm just going to show you how I set my camera up for bird photography for when I'm walking around handheld. My bird photography is often quite planned so I'll often be going to a specific location for a specific species and I'll have a particular shot in mind. Um, but that doesn't mean that I won't get opportunities along the way. So if I've got a smaller lens like I have with me today, uh, then I'll make sure that I've got the camera set up and then I can take advantage if we get uh, a bird suddenly flying against the sky or maybe a bird landing briefly in a tree. It means I can just quickly get the camera up to my eye and fire some shots off and I'm not having to worry about changing the settings. So the best thing to do is get the settings ready in your camera that you would choose if you're going to be photographing action. So that's what I do when I'm walking around. I basically set it up pretty similar to as if I was photographing birds in flight. Before I go on to the settings, I'm just going to show you this strap, which I really, really love, which is uh, Black Rapid, if you look that up. There are a few other options which are cheaper, but I don't think they do the job as well. Um, it's worth paying a bit of money for this because it just does such a good job, I think. So instead of having it on one shoulder you have it across like that and then you actually have the camera <coughs> upside down so you can screw this in to the lens foot as I have done here and then just basically hangs by your side but the beauty of it is because it's upside down hanging like that it's a bit like shooting from the hip so you can just grab the camera and you can just swing it straight up and you're ready to fire absolutely perfect so perfect if you're walking around shooting handheld I'm using a Canon 1DX not the Mark II but the first version and I basically want to set the camera up for speed so I want to imagine those birds in flight and being able to take advantage of that so the shooting mode I tend to use when I'm walking around is aperture priority which is A or AV so I like that simply because you don't have to think as much about the exposure the camera is gonna get the exposure fairly accurate most of the time and it's really important that you select a fast shutter speed. Again, anything that suddenly comes by, you want to be able to take advantage. So I want to get a shutter speed anywhere from a thousandth to two thousandth of a second. Ideally, that'll be enough. And to do that, I'll use after priority and then I'll select a wide aperture, often of about f6.3, as I've got set at the moment with my 400mm lens. Uh, so selecting a wide aperture that's going to let a lot of light in and it's going to help to keep the shutter speed up. Now in terms of the ISO, there's different ways you could do it. Uh, you could use automatic ISO. What I tend to do, if the light's consistent, then I tend to set the ISO manually using my experience. So I know at the moment in these conditions, very, very bright, I know if I set ISO 400, I'm going to get a shutter speed. It's going to be fast enough. Um, if it's quite an overcast day, then I'm more likely to go possibly up to about ISO 1600 in order to get the same shutter speed that's fast enough. Um, so you could use automatic ISO instead. Myself, I find auto ISO works really well for me in changeable light. If the light's changing a lot, then that can help. And also either end of the day. So particularly around sunrise and sunset, where you've got a mixture of light and shade, auto ISO works really well, I think the autofocus option is really important as well so I would set the tracking autofocus that's sometimes ASC on Canon it's the AI servo so that's the one again that's going to be great for action because uh, you don't want to miss those opportunities if they happen and finally just make sure that you've got a camera set on a continuous shooting mode so it's not set to take one picture at a time you want it on the continuous frame rate uh, sometimes called the burst mode so you want to be able to take lots of pictures. I often have mine set on a pretty high frame rate, maybe about 10 frames a second when I'm just walking around like this with the camera. So um, again, that's ideal for anything that suddenly happens, particularly action, and then you can fire off a load of shots and you've got a greater chance of getting that one perfect one. So I think those settings work really well when you're just walking around and you're not sure what might turn up and you're ready to take advantage of any opportunity. But what if you're already photographing something else? Maybe you're already photographing a static bird on a branch and you've changed your settings, or maybe even you're doing like a landscape shot with a long lens, for example, and you've got completely different settings which are more appropriate for what you're doing. If a bird suddenly flies past, it's a really good opportunity. You're not gonna be able to change the settings quick enough. So how are you gonna deal with that? There is a way of being able to change the settings very, very quickly. And for ages, I just didn't get around to this and I finally got around to it now. So I'm going to show you how you can change the camera um, so you can very, very quickly change from whatever shooting mode you're in at the moment to one that's set up for speed and for action. 
to set this up on a 1DX or similar camera, what you need to do is choose the settings that you would want as if you were just going to be using them straight away. So your autofocus options, shooting mode, aperture, shutter speed, all those things. Select those and then you need to go into the menu and you want to find the yellow tool section of the menu. And in there you should find custom shooting mode. And if you click on that, on mine it says in brackets C1 to C3. Clicking there and then you'll have register settings. If you click on register settings and click OK and that now has registered all the settings that you've chosen and it's registered those as a custom shooting mode. So you have the option to clear the settings if you want to completely wipe it and you also have the option of um, updating it so you can enable or disable and basically what this does if you've got the update section disabled it means that when you go onto your C1 custom shooting mode um, even if you then tweak that so you might want to go into the C1 custom function mode but then you may want to add some exposure compensation for example if you do that it won't override the settings that you've put in to that custom function so I think that's ideal for me using it that way alternatively if you select um, enable the update if you then make an adjustment to that custom setting it will actually overwrite it and save over it so if I want to get to that custom shooting mode that I've saved in the camera, I simply just click the little button on the front and it's literally one quick tap of that and whatever I'm currently in, it will switch straight away to those settings that I've saved in the camera. Well, what I tend to do now for my kind of walkabout photography, opportunistic photography, is to set it on AV with a wide aperture, high shutter speed, continuous shooting, continuous autofocus, and then I'll select the ISO depending on the lighting conditions, and that works for me. Sometimes I'll use auto ISO. And then the other option I have set up in the custom function as C1, I set that up purely for speed um, to give me as much shutter speed as I can, assuming that the light levels may be fairly low. So I've actually set that as a custom function to all the settings I talked about earlier uh, but I've set it to ISO 1600. So that's going to be absolutely perfect if I'm maybe photographing something else and a bird flies past, I can quick, literally just quickly tap that button on the front, it'll go straight to those settings I've saved as C1 and hopefully it's going to get me a sharp flight shot. So on my camera it has C1, C2 and C3, so what that means is uh, not only just setting up one custom function for C1, if I wanted I could set up completely different parameters, different exposure settings for C2 and C3 and then I could just flick between those as necessary. Thanks for watching that little tutorial, um, I hope that was useful to some of you out there, particularly if you're a Canon user, maybe have a 1DX 5D or 7D, they should be fairly similar. Um, it's good to try and get the most out of your camera. I think there's so much stuff on the camera that you don't use and that probably isn't that necessary. But if there's certain things that can make your life easier and enable you to react quicker and not to miss out on pictures and opportunities, then it's worth having a look into it and seeing if you can use it. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching and um, I'll see you somewhere in nature sometime soon.